Hi, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about debt free, how to get rid of debt and take home the pay you truly deserve with Randall Tiongson. Now who is Randall? Well Randall is one of today's most respected personal finance coaches in the country. He's also the director of Registered Financial Planner Institute of the Philippines. And he's a best-selling author of No Nonsense Personal Finance. He's also organizing one of the biggest investment and personal finance conferences in the country, ICON 2015. It happens on May 30, 2015 at the SMX Manila at the SM Mall of Asia Complex. At the end of the interview, we're gonna tell you how to win one of five free tickets to ICON 2015. So without further ado, here's Mr. Randall Tiongson. Randall, when I read your book, no, and there's one quote yeah. there that um, I like to talk about. You said, um, history reveals that some form of slavery was a result of non-payment of obligations, which would yes, yes. have devastating effects to the borrower and their heirs. In short, okay. in modern times, nagiging parang sort of modern slavery ang debt eh, to our lives. That's, that's the whole thing. No? Um, before kasi debt results to bondage. No? Today, right. Yung being too much into debt or you know debt that you cannot control it's it's a form of bondage eh? uh-huh. not a physical bondage anymore but more of a mental and emotional bondage right so in, in your experience as a financial planner and advocate mm-hmm. what have been the effect of debt in the lives of people and their families well unfortunately uh it causes so much stress right. and a lot of stress causes a lot of relational issues mm-hmm. um, work issues and so forth and so on mm-hmm. uh it, it really causes a lot of drift or uh, parang nag-aaway, mag-asawa, family oh, members or even even at work no i mean mm-hmm. an employee that has a debt issue or you know uncontrolled debt um it affects his ability to perform well eh? so therefore right may impact yan sa productivity mm-hmm. which ultimately will result to you know um, output of work is not good right. and ultimately meron niya impact sa bottom line right. so those are the concerns so it's a big concern for mm-hmm. companies with employees with a lot of debt mm-hmm. it it affects both personal life and professional life diba and if if that's the case yes in the end eh, alam mo mm-hmm. the, the thing with fi- yeah the thing with finance hindi lang yan he will lie, eh? it's, right. it's really affecting everything, no? Even your relationships can be affected. Oh, because of stress, because of, you know, uh, inability to perform well. Yeah. Right. And if that's the case, kasi ang debt naman, it's not something that happens to us, eh? It's something that that we do, right? Um, why do people still yeah, accumulate oh, oh. debt? If it and you don't get into it. a big... You don't get into... A, you don't even go into a big debt automatically. Right. It right. takes time. Right, right. It's it's positions compounded over time. Mm. So you know, again, problem. So why do people get into debt? Uh well, number one, because you know, it's it's a shortcut eh, for you to get what you want. Eh. Right. It always goes back na, you know, I want to be able to have this. I, I need to this. So they use it as a a, a bridge, no? Or keep it, cause it, or maybe their income. Is, so they to bridge the gap. Unfortunately, right. it's not designed to be a permanent bridge. It's mm-hmm. only a temporary one. Right. No. Now, in your long experience as a financial planner, among the people that you've seen who have successfully defeated debt, what are common traits? Nila? Mm-hmm. And what if the, that's the trait? Is this something na innate sa tao or it's something you can develop? I think it needs, it needs to be developed first. Because no? culturally, we're not very financially empowered or financially knowledgeable. Eh? So right. I think we have to learn how to handle your finances better. I think what is common with a lot of people who were able to kick the debt issue is they were able to make that decision and eh, the hard choices in life. Mm-hmm. Um, they just wonder one day they wake up na, Oy, ayoko na. I mean, I don't want to live a life like this. I don't want to have a future that's that's uh, that's in in jeopardy or it's affecting my relationships and stuff. Then they made that decision. I think the making the the hard decision first of getting out of debt is the most challenging one. Right. Plus and- the dedication for to get out of it so and then of course the pain the discipline came in they learn how to you know control the spending say no to some spending or you know learn how to prioritize and i i know that you're a big fan of dave ramsey no and i've been reading up yeah. on his book and he says that in turning point on tao is when they say that they're sick and tired of being sick and tired <laughs> so sometimes... yeah it's, it's it's a one point time you get a it's tiring i say you know being in debt is like running the marathon of life right. with a backpack full of rocks. At one point in time, 
bibigay ka na. You just mm-hmm. can't handle it anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's that's that the turning point is long for some people. Mm-hmm. It's short for some people. Some people can handle it better than the others. So iba iba yan. Normally, would you say it's more of an emotional turning point rather than an intellectual one? Because if intellectual, you wouldn't get into that problem to begin with. Eh? That's right. <laughs> you know, right. the thing is that. Kaya nga, my recommendations for getting out of debt is really more behavioral change because getting into a debt to begin with, it means that you did not think, did not think things through. So, hindi yun ang solution. The solution is, what do I need to do so that I will get out of debt? What do I need to do so that I will not get back to debt? Kasi you can get out of debt and get back to it just as fast. No? Right. So, those are the decisions that you have to make. And most of them, they are behavioral in nature. Right. Right, and it's a good segue to our next segment, no? Because first we talk about mindset. Ngayon naman, what are the things, the tactics that people can do to start getting out of debt? So in your book, No Nonsense Personal Finance, you talked about using the debt snowball to pay off your debt. Um, could you expand yeah. on this a little bit more? Well, number one, no, um, using the debt debt snowball means that you're you're you gonna you light up all your debt and you start paying the smallest one first, mm-hmm. and as you pay the smaller one. The smallest one, you move on to the next bigger one, mm. and then go on and go on, and it, it kind of snowball effect. Now, a lot of people will always argue that that's not the most efficient way of doing it. Mm-hmm. They will say that first, so very logical the approach. I agree. Mm. Is a lot of people go into a debt problem not because of lo- not because of ano eh, of a logical decision eh. right. It's an emotional decision and so forth and so on. So that's the way for you to be able to do it. And secondly. Um, when you're trying to pay your debt na very wantonly, no, walang structure, walang direction, you will you will be frustrated with the lack of progress. Eh. Mm-hmm. You see, when you start to pay your debt na maliit lang, na motivate ka kasi, uy, nabayaran ko to, ha? then uh-huh. I can go to the next one. Then slowly, you're changing. Right. Okay? When you try to pay all your debt all at the same time, which I don't recommend, mm-hmm. uh, you will get into what you call a debt payment fatigue. Mm-hmm. And then debt mm-hmm. payment fatigue means you're just too tired and then you stop. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, you know, what's Intention wise, they want to be debt free. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. Then, mm-hmm. Now that we're like solving your debt problem, no? Ang isa pang solution, siyempre, wag na dagdagan itong utang na to. So, what are the techniques? Getting out of debt right. and avoid it. Oh, well, number one goes back. I mean, corny as a team, budgeting, mm-hmm. each and once. Mm. You always have to go back to that, eh? right. because that's the only way for you to permanently, permanently get out of debt and not go back into it. Because right. you have to get out of debt and avoid new debt. Mm-hmm. But if you're using debt to finance, to right. to bridge your finances, then you're in trouble. Because to begin with, bakit bakulang yan? Mm-hmm. Either you're not earning enough or you're spending too much right. or somewhere in between the two. Right. So those are the things. If it's an income problem, then what you need to do is try to work so that you're harder. Mm-hmm. Be more entrepreneurial or you know creative, so that your debt, your income goes up. Mm-hmm. Or if you know income is not too bad, it's it might be a spending problem. So again, needs versus wants, priorities, mm-hmm. and you know have to able to you know how to tighten your belt time, talk to the right. family, downsize, mm-hmm. you know downscale your lifestyle and so forth. You mentioned also in your book about creating an emergency fund. Saan papasak yung emergency yeah. fund with regard to debt payment? Like, kasi with... with yan yung, yung trick. Please go ahead. Yan yung tricky part, Alan. Ano? Mm. Kasi, y- while you're paying, you're actually setting aside your debt already or emergency mm. funds. And, and and some people do not have the uh, tenacity to do so. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, ideally, you have to do it sabay. Right. Uh, because, you know, emergencies can still happen while you're paying. But, mm-hmm. but you just have to... to understand that there's also limitations eh? so if you only have x amount of money you probably have to pay your debt first and then you know build on your emergency funds afterwards some people can do it at the same time then well and good right so with emergency fund we are talking about three to six months of your household expense or your monthly, monthly expenses expense, yeah okay or at least siguro when you're trying to pay your debt kahit na kahit na one month muna mm-hmm. we also have to have ano eh, not all our goals will always have to be altruistic or talagang I ami mean, ideal eh. you have mm-hmm. to be realistic also kung talaga one month muna and oh, I'll take that one month that's right. that's a seed money right. but all you have to do is remember to build it up later on right let me just go back quickly to the debt snowball no? you said paying off the smallest amount first 
So, mm-hmm. kung binabayaran mo yon, for the rest yeah. of your loans no or credit card debt, you should just pay minimum mm-hmm. for the meantime. So, yun yung yun yung ideal part. Uh-huh. And then you have to get back to the others okay. as fast as you can. Don't take your time because you know the interest are still uh, compounding. Eh. Right. So, let's jump ahead sa reader questions naman. So, yeah, sige. May tanong si Jennifer, no? It's is getting a lower interest loan to pay off your credit card debt a good option? So, mangungutang siya at a lower interest to pay the ones with a higher interest. Is that a good idea? Ako, I don't recommend because for me, parang the solution, eh, it's another utang. Right. Parang you're putting one problem and you want to solve another problem. You have to go to the root cause of the problem. Mm. Why are you in debt first? Mm. Maybe too much spending or... You know, not enough income or you know controls or what it needs so you have to fix that first before you do anything else mm-hmm. so you know it sounds good I mean one of those things it sounds good but right. a lot of people who do that end up being in even more debt mm-hmm. right so the nila umutang ulit so the idea is not to do that you have to pay your debt talaga from money that you you earn and money that you save okay then from Maricel no ito naman medyo mas specific um the, uh-huh. she has debt of 130k then ang nababayaran uh-huh. lang niya is the minimum of 5k what would you advise uh-huh. her to do in order to make some ground from her debt naman oh you cannot pay just the minimum because hindi ka matatapos so take you many many years right. what she needs to do Maricel needs to do is to look at the budget closely and how can he she increase that debt payment, if she can make it to, say, 10000 it mm-hmm. will drastically reduce her paying periods. Mm-hmm. Instead of many, many years, maybe a few years na lang. Right. Or whenever you have extra money, let's say, bonus ka, maybe you, you can apportion half of that bonus to use that. So you want to be able to be in a hurry to get that um, debt down to a manageable mm-hmm. level. Well, one of the tips that Dave Ramsey shares in his book no, is to... To do garage sales, yung mga items na yeah. hindi mo na ginagamit. Sell unwanted stuff, yes. Right. Sell unwanted right. stuff, yeah. Because people seem that's to... That's good. Ha- Kasi, right. that's something, ala, alam mo, when you look at around your your house, there's a lot of stuff that you don't need it. Right. Or that it, it, it has value, no? Or even old jewelry and stuff like that. Minsan, nagugulat kami, we're, we're counseling people, meron pala siyang property na minana, mm-hmm. na, you know, putting on, on it for just for posterity reasons. Sabi right. ko, you have to be practical, try to sell it, and, you know, stuff that you don't need. Right. Or even stuff that you have that maybe you can't afford at the moment. Mm-hmm. And jewelry. Right. And ito naman question from Jan. Um, how to settle default credit card? Or is it a good idea to settle if settle it if it was for, forwarded already to a third-party agency? What would you advise to that? Well, Ideally, the earlier the better. Pero kunyari, umabot ka na sa ganon, there's no more choice. No? Tip to those handling debt, you can actually negotiate. Okay. You can actually bring down the debt kasi most of them are interest. And most companies or credit collectors, they just want to be paid. Eh. So, you know, you just have to be honest enough. You tell your the, the collector or the company or the credit agency that, you know, I can only pay so much. Maybe, what can we do to, to strike the debt off? I want to pay, but... Yeah, really. Wala naman na kukuhaan talaga eh. So, mm. that's that's a tricky part. So, you just have to hold your ground and try to negotiate for better better deals with your credit card companies. In, in this case, normally kasi it's a third party na, no? Hindi na directly with the credit card company. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, in general, are they... Yeah, but these are very... authorized naman eh. Right. Uh, they, they are very willing they to can't negotiate. Bring naman. it down. I mean, yeah, all of them are willing. Up to how well you negotiate, yeah. Pagalingan na lang yan talaga. It takes your patience talaga uh-huh. to negotiate. And you just have to be honest. Mm-hmm. If you only have, let's say you have 130 and you have 40,000 today, and you just tell them, you know, I have 40,000 today. Can I just pay you 40,000 and quits tayo? Uh-huh. You'll be surprised sometimes they say yes. Eh. Ah, I see. That's a very good tip. <laughs> just be, 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 no, no? be prepared to sell out money once you negotiate. Mm-hmm. Right. You'll, that... be, you'll be surprised. Minsan, minsan more than half yung binabawas. Wow. So, yeah, very important tip when you negotiate. And mm-hmm. ito naman with regard to friend na nagpautang. Kasi, actually, mm. hindi ko nga sure kung friend talaga ito, no? Kasi, nag-worry siya. <laughs> he's paying, he's earning minimum, no? 480 a day. Tapos, nag-worry siya kasi yung interest mm-hmm. na pinautang ng friend niya sa kanya, it seems like nag-interest 10% every 15 days. 
So parang hindi to medyo wow. ano to. So medyo grabe ito. O, o, what would you advise to that? Do, do, do you have, have you encountered yung mga ganong situation? May yan, yung mga talagang 5, 6, and 1 situation. Right. Una-una, so, just to be honest, brutally frank, tingin ko hindi kaibigan yan. Ano? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> very usurious yung kanyang rate. No? I mean, 20% <laughs> per month is really something else. Right. Uh, no other way but to get out of that situation and pay off and never borrow from that friend and right. tagalin mo na sa Facebook friend. <laughs> and learn how to handle your finances properly. Right. So, Kasi nagkakaroon ka na ng more problems ngayon eh. Mm. Imbis na kasi pera mo, ngayon may interest ka pa, binabayaran, magugulong right. ka pa, sisingiling ka pa, haharapsing ka pa. Mm-hmm. Tapos sira pa ang relationship nyo. Borrowing from friends is not a good idea because at the end of the day, you will see uh, ruined relationships. Eh. Right. Now, if ikaw naman yung friend, nangangailangan yung tao, eh, may bigyan po na, alam, huwag mo na po kong tangin. Right. Right. At the end of the day, relationship is more important than the interest that you will earn. That's right. And which is segues, segues pro, well into kasi nagkulang nga siya sa information, literacy. That's why napunta siya sa mga 5-6. Yeah. May tanong from Emmy asking, how to have a mentor for business and finances? Like, people, kasi siguro surrounding sila, they don't have anyone who knows about the, these <laughs> things. What's the first step, you know, to, to go into financial literacy and have someone guide you? Well, number one, it's good to start buying books mm-hmm. na about it. Ideally, Filipino authors right. for business, mga go-negosyo books. Mm-hmm. Then they have, you know, seminars. May mga free seminars along dyan. Hindi naman lahat ng seminar na kailangan mo ba yan. Eh. Kung mm-hmm. free yan, then you start with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are the things that you can learn. Makikilala ka rin dyan. Right. Or around your circle, somebody who's successful, uh, be humble enough and to ask to be mentored. Uh, if it's a successful person, Kadalasan naman, hindi naman yan magkakait eh. Tutulungan ka niya talaga. Mm-hmm. Sit down with you. Uh, right. Go around the internet or seminars are a great way for you to do so. So, mm-hmm. ito yun mo lang, which are the free seminars. Right. Or, you know, pag-negosyo naman, may mga go-negosyo programs. Mm-hmm. They have books, you know. Right. You spend 300, 400 pesos for a book investment. Right. And mentorship, minsan naman kasi ang mentorship, hindi naman in-person yan eh. Sometimes, book authors... Yeah. Diba? Could be mentors, video tutorials, oh, could be course. mentors. Yeah. As long as they point you to the right direction. But some, some actually, they, they, some, some people will, uh, ano, may kaibiga ka na successful, they'll take you. Right. I mean, it's hard naman. If successful people naman, tapos kakilala pa, lumapit ka, and all humility, asking to be helped, right. can help you. So, right. don't be afraid to try. And mentor, kasi sometimes it's a big term. Pero sa totoo lang, it's someone yeah. who knows more than you. That you yeah. who, you want to replicate their results, diba? Yeah. Be careful lang as to who you ask for men- mentorship, mentoring. Right. Baka mamaya yan, di ba? Hindi naman okay yan sa financially. Akala mo lang mayaman, pero grabe pala gumastos, tayo pala pala utang. Right. I'll stay away from those things. Right. If, is there any, like, do you have any particular... Kasi syempre, you, you mentioned we have to be careful of who we ask advice from. Do you yeah, have, yes. like, in your personal capacity, do you recommend specific books or... Maybe set trainings that people could that you think are already proven to be qu- quality and trustworthy. Well, for me, I, for a good starter for negotio type business will be the go negotio programs. Mm-hmm. You have people like Paulo TV, franchise right. people. They can help you with those things. Now, for finance, of course, there's the RFP programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's Truly Rich. There's a lot of these programs naman that you can get into eh, that are not necessarily expensive and sometimes right. libre pa nga eh. Right. Yeah. And this coming May 30, I know that you're going to hold a very big yeah. business and investing conference which is bigger than the, I think last year was yes, the first yes. one, right? So, this is even bigger. And I No, last year was the second one. This is the third one. Wow, it's yeah. the third one. So, maybe you could share more about this event and you could invite people to join. Well, Sige. On May 30, it's going to be the ICON, the investment conference. It's the biggest investing and finance event of the year. Um, we feature as the best of the best. Um, there's Francis Kong, Chinky Tan, uh, Jess Uwe, Michael Manuel, Efren uh, um, Cruz, Marvin Guillermo, and myself. So these are the say, icons in the industry. Mm-hmm. And there be there's a lot of things that can help you with those things by attending the program. So you're going to give away... We're gonna give away five passes to Icon 2015. Oh, yon, yon, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. um, in the, the, 
<laughs> comment section below. We we talked about that, di ba? So maybe we we yeah. we miss some, we miss something and may mga tips ka about helping uh, people out about solving debt. Please put your answers in the comment section below and we'll pick the best ones and I'll email you if you if you won the ticket to Icon 2015. So great, great, great. So thank great. you very much. I hope much. to yeah. see I hope to see you guys there at uh, Icon. Yes, and you right, know, thank you, Alan. the lineup there could be your future mentor. So I highly advise you of to course. visit join the oh, contest. Oh, oh, lapilitan niyo pag ganoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you go to Icon, you see these people, you see me, Marvin. Yeah. Just go to them, approach them, and yeah. you know, and who knows? Mm-hmm. That they might decide to mentor you out of the blue. Right. And tingin mo si Sir Randall nasa kotse pero he he's willing to join me in this interview. So you yeah. can see his dedication. <laughs> You know, to spread financial literacy. Oh. So thank you very much for that, <laughs> Sir. Andy. Sorry, I wish I had better connection. All right, thank <laughs> okay. you, Alan. Thank God you very you. much. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Now, thanks a lot for watching. Now, if you're interested in investing in the stock market as a beginner, I invite you to join over 10,000 people who've taken this special stock market crash course for beginners for free. Just click on the link below or visit trulyrichclubblog.com. Thanks a lot for your time and see you next time.